I was not having it. I'm going to have a guy come and try to tell me you want to fight me. Put your hands on me and see who goes jail first. That was the day that I wanted to go home and like end my life. Like I was sitting there thinking about ways to do it. Just being abused and like getting hit and getting pushed and getting hurt and like she punched and slapped and kicked and how I was going to tell my family was I going to do a video and leave that behind? Was I going to write a note? Stop my stuff being thrown everywhere. The McDonald's staff just saying stop, like what are you doing? It would be a remark here, push here, uh, don't let me get past. However, I'm so just eat your biscuit because you're a fool. And as he was coming off the bus, like, he looked at me and he winked at me. And I was like, <laughs> I was trash. God, it just got so hard. It just got so hard. <laughs> Okay, I guess it's time. <laughs> um, hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, I'm Abby Savila JD. I make fashion and beauty and advice kind of videos. As you guys can see by the title, story time of like my bullying in college. <laughs> this is, is like, <laughs> it's just my most requested video of all time. Ever since I did the having no friends and being alone video, which is like my most popular video on my whole channel, of like the, I think there's like 200, 300 comments, of that, 70% of them is like, do the video. I knew at the time that I posted that video, um, it wasn't going to be any time soon. I think that video is also about a year old now. What's making me do it today? I don't even know. You probably probably think like, what the hell are you talking about? But um, all be clear in a video. I don't know if this is going to be a long video. At the same time, a lot of you want to see this video, so I don't want to, one, rush it, but two, I don't want to make it so long that you guys just kind of get lost in everything. I will be changing people's names. Um, however, the people that are in this, I'm talking about, you know who you are. One of the reasons why I didn't want to do this video at the very beginning when I actually posted that video is because I wasn't sure whether it was a good idea. I'm telling you guys something that happened to me. It's not fabricated, it's not um, over-exaggerated. It happened. People did these things. If I want to tell the story, I of all people in this situation and say the story, I feel like because of how they would feel about it, I shouldn't have did a video, I'm gonna do the video. So bullies, this is for you. Um, long story short, I'm gonna recap on a few bits that were inside the other video, but I'm just gonna make it very, very fast and then start in the story that you guys don't know about. Yeah. So I am originally from a part of um, England, is outside of London. So I'm, I'm from Essex, London. So I live kind of like half London, half Essex. Um, so I am an Essex girl. <laughs> the end of year 11, um, when everyone would leave secondary school and decide what college they wanted to go to. I really wanted to go somewhere else. The whole reason why I wanted to not stay in my school sixth form was because it was the same people and I loved the people who went to my secondary school but I just wanted something different I wanted to, and I wanted to be able to travel you know like oh I know more school uniform you get to wear your own clothes I want to be able to travel look cute on the train you know like little city girl you know I'm gonna say the name of the college um you probably will find if you want to find out you'll find out so I'm not even gonna try and hide it like near Leighton Stone area Wolverhamstone area wherever yeah it was about an hour and a half away from a journey home. Really excited about it. Like I was stupid excited about it. And in secondary school, like I never ever got bullied. Um, and I wasn't a bully. I witnessed bullying, um, but not to the extent that I now know it can get to. Um, um, at the start, I mean, within the first week, I was like, yes, living it up. Man's loving it out here. Like it's wicked. I like the journey. Like I thought everything was hunky dory. Coming out of little old Essex, like Essex is a predominantly white area. Um, <laughs> um, not that's a bad thing, but it is. Lived the school that I went to was actually had a lot of black people there, so it was like I knew black people. But like when I came to this college, yeah, there was black people everywhere. Like I was loving it up. Like literally little Essex girl, but and come to um, Wolverhampton area. Black people here, different walks of life, different, you know, people, boy, girl, everywhere. Like, I, was, I was like, cool. Uh, um, and I'm going to start giving out names. So there's a girl called T. No, I'm not going to even call her T because... <laughs> Let's call her Tara. There was a girl called Tara. This boy, yeah, 
from the Tia. Uh, let's call him Kevin. So there was, there was this bait guy from Twitter. We followed each other before we actually even came to the college. So we sat down, we were speaking, and then Tara must have come along, some this girl. And I never knew her from anywhere. She sat down, joined the conversation. Basically, like she basically started talking shit about some girl. Um, and I, was, I didn't really know the girl, so I just kind of was just like, I knew of the girl that she was talking about, but I didn't really know the girl. And I didn't really know this girl, Tara, personally either, so I was just like, group of people you're talking, I'm here, obviously I'm listening, but I'm not really like, I ain't really got that to say. The girl that she was talking shit about confront, confronted me and was like, Tara said, you said this about me. I was like, I don't know you. It wasn't me, like, it was her. Go ask Kevin, he'll tell you, like, I wasn't the one that said it. And, like, Kevin was like, yeah, he backed me. Like, he was like, he told her, like, it wasn't me. Like, the girl still decided to leave Tara. I was like, whatever. All the people I'm talking about are black people as well. I'm really not trying to conceal anyone's identity. I'm really not. Because you know who you are. Like, there's a girl called Rachel, you know. Her name's not Rachel, but I'll give her a fake name, Rachel. The girl that, that was like the it girl, so like the one that knew everyone, was proper loud, proper everywhere. And he spoke a couple times actually to see when she used to smile, she'd be like, You're right, yeah, and be like, Yeah, you, whatever. Like, it wasn't really anything other than that. And after a while, like, it became a thing where it was dirty looks. Like, all of a sudden, one day it was a dirty look, and I was just like, I was naive then, but I didn't really, I wasn't really the type to ask questions. I feel like I'd be stupid to come over to you, someone and address them and be like, Ah. Oh, you didn't say hi to me today, is something wrong? It's childish sort of thing, it's a childish conversation to have. If, if I know something hasn't happened, if you're going to do that, just do that. And it became a consistent thing. I didn't say anything, I kind of left it. And then it became like a serious kind of like, I don't like you. I remember um, me and this girl, we used to at each other on Twitter actually, we used to actually talk on Twitter. Someone tweeted and she was in it and like, I need the person, and then I tweeted something back or whatever. And then she must have unfollowed me or something. Well, I can't remember what happened, but like she either said something odd back or she unfollowed me and didn't reply. And I was just like, <laughs> okay. Like. Right, I'm going to speed this up now. And um, this story is going to be all over the place, but just um, keep that one person to the side. So keep Rachel to the side for a second. Going back to Tara now. Tara must have had a fight one day. She was, um, she was talking shit about some girl, another girl, actually. And the girl whooped her ass. Like She beat her back. She beat her. Kermit sips tea in it because it's got nothing to do with me now like you don't put me in shit like I, but I didn't we didn't have an argument because of the last situation I kind of just left it because I was just like whatever like at the end of the day the girl that she was talking of shit about and I was there really and truly I can get why she's mad because I was there so I kind of think I think I was carried on talking to Tara but it wasn't I, I, I watched how I used to talk to her or what she used to say about the fight or oh, I saw it I can't remember her at the time that it happened, yeah, I was around, and she was, I always, like, fav that was my favourite toilet, <laughs> um, and that talk shop, so I was, like, always around that building, the library was there as well. She went inside, so I went inside the bathroom, she was in there, she was messed up, her face was bleeding, she was crying, her hair was a mess, like, her clothes was a mess. I felt sympathy. Like, and this is one of the key moments that I look back and I'm just like, I wish I was a bad person. If I had not done what I did next, I didn't maybe even be having to tell the story. She must be so embarrassed. That like, had nothing to do with me, but even I felt it, like, just watching her cry, like. So I told her, dry your tears or whatever. I gave her, like, my makeup. I said, like, fix your hair, fake makeup and stuff. Gave her a bra. Like, oh, yeah, I got a boy, best friend. His college is literally 15 minutes around the corner. I'm going to get him to come. to da 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 go get my sister. So it was maybe around, let's say, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Like, so, I, so I said to her, where does your sister live? Like, she's like, oh, she lives in... Stratford at the bus like I think it was 97 we needed to take so she was like I'll jump on it with you later on just casually talking so I was like, alright um we both finished at four or something so we was gonna just meet up everyone finished at four o'clock if you're wondering why I'm like so smiley and laughy it's because I'm just like remembering stuff like as I'm saying I've never actually said this out loud so she wants to meet up with her boy best friend where their college is, it, it goes there first, so they're going to jump on a bus, and then when then they're on the 97, that's the one we need to jump on. So we got on it, she said to me he was with one person or whatever, I don't know him from nowhere. Yeah, I need the college that they went to, because they actually wore like... Do you know what, F it, I'm going to be honest, F it, I'm really not trying to make anyone feel good. I want people to know who they are, like if you watch this video, I want you to know I'm talking about you, because you did these things, I don't give, I don't give an F. 
I really don't. They wore this like bright blue tracksuit or whatever. Oh, they were on top of the bus. So I got on the bus, went upstairs. Tell me why I'm so low, I went upstairs. The whole of the back of the bus was filled with these boys. <laughs> Uh, I don't think it's yeah, I'm not even gonna lie, like, everyone thought these boys in the blue, blue tracksuits or whatever were nice, innit? Cause like, they just stood out when everyone used to get on the bus, like, they, these boys were sports boys, innit? Saying we pro or whatever. And I don't know any of them, so I'm just sitting there, they're like, are oh, you friends with her? I was like, yeah. So I was just sitting there eating biscuit. <laughs> no, having no friends with you, I would've told you there was a guy that this girl introduced me to. Um, this is the moment that I met him. So he must've been sitting in front of me. Like, when I got the bus, yeah, he was the first one I saw. Like, I've never, I've never seen anyone like that <laughs> and I had the only free seat was behind him so anyway I was like admiring him from behind his head the bus journey was like 20 minutes or something occasionally she would talk to me just make sure I'm good or whatever I'm just there eating biscuit I was just like I'm do you know what you look like I was looking like all kind of riffraff and there's this beautiful specimen in my head then yeah I was like they don't make this in Essex <laughs> sitting there eating biscuit just so she must have been like, you're right. And I was like, yeah. I don't know where I got the confidence. What's his name? And she was like, his name is... But she was like, okay, let me give her a fake name. She was like, his name's Chris. I was like... And he just turned around like, did someone say my name? I was like... No. <laughs> um, and I didn't say anything to him. I just carried eating my biscuit. I was so embarrassed. I was so Dumb, like, I was so dumb. I'm gonna ask her what's his name when he's right in front of me. Obviously, he's gonna hear her when she. I was like, whatever. I'm so just eat your biscuit because you're a fool. On the bus, and as he was coming off the bus, like he looked at me and he winked at me, and I was like, <laughs> I was trash. I was actually smiled. That was on my face. Yeah, it wasn't even like I wanted to style it out. I was so happy. Like, this boy is a bastard. This boy is a bastard, guys. This does not end well. This that's her. That's my future husband. That like, I want to be his wife. Like I went home. Chris said he wants your number. I was like, huh? She's like, I told him what you said. Yeah, he wants your number. I was like, okay, you can give it to him. <laughs> Me and him started talking. Hit off. I really liked him. You know, from what I understand till now, it was mutual. Um, I have my doubts about certain things, but she met up when. He'd come to my college on breaks or whatever, but we spoke every day, bumped into each other. Everyone used to hang out at this McDonald's. Dude, I had this other friend called Ali or whatever, um, and Ali was really shy. She had, she was in a class with this girl called, uh, let's call her Winter. Winter used to bully my friend Ali. Uh, I knew like the kind of person she kind of was. I didn't really want to get involved. I told her, you know, stick up for yourself, stick up for yourself. So I think I mentioned it to him that our uh, there's this girl called um, Winter, I don't really like her, like, it's not really she ain't really done anything to me, but she's done something to my friend, and I don't really know what to do, but yeah, like, just men and she mentioned it casually. And he used to do this thing, yeah, where he used to piss me off, he purposely would call me Winter, or he'd be like, ah, oh, we'd be joking around or something, I might go chat to Winter if you don't behave, and I'd be like, at first I was just like, shut the hell up. And then it'd be a consistent thing every single day. Okay, now it's not funny because this girl is actually upsetting my friend. Like, I told you about her because obviously I was just confiding in you or whatever. I didn't know what to do about t to help my friend. But now you're taking a piss because you're actually talking about this winter girl um, to piss me off. Be like, oh, how did you see her today? Or, uh, what's wrong with you? Like, why? Like, bit before Christmas, I uh, used to talk every day. And then eventually he started being real distant. I got to know his friend a little bit and got more to know Tara. Isaiah, he used to tell me about him or whatever because he's best friends with Chris and Tara, who Chris I'm seeing, Tara is my friend. And I told Tara about it, I was like, I really don't know what I did. So she was like, I'll, I'll ask Isaiah to find out what's going on. She was like, Isaiah, I don't know what's going on either. Da, da, da. And then Christmas Day came. I was like, just walk around the house all miserable. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Do you want your Christmas present? I was like, Who's my Christmas present? Do you just have to to me? <laughs> he was like, Oh, it's me if you still want me. I was like, Nigga, I still want you, but uh, he just had some things on his mind. I should know what it is that was bothering him. I was like, I don't know what it is that's bothering you. He was like, You should know. I was like, Why don't you tell me? He was like, You should know. Um, as well, I made another, f uh, I don't want to say her name, I'm going to call her Claire. It was literally just crazy. Um, and um, me and her used to hang out. Me and Tara were still talking, everything was cool. 
But me and Chris was just not cool. You keep on saying you should know what's going. You should know I'm mad. Da, da, da. And I did not know. I honestly didn't know, guys. Everyone would go to this McDonald's, chill from my college, his college, other colleges. Like and we'd beat me up there. Like I remember I was there with um, Ali one day, and then he came over, gave me a kiss or whatever. I was like cute, and he, he went. Da, 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 so it was cute. Yeah, one day I was like Claire, like Claire. All the people in this are black, by the way. They're all black. I was like, why don't we go to later on? And um, if he's there, just call him outside and you two can talk. Really and truly, what happened, I could have avoided it. On that day, I usually finished at four. On that day, though, my final lesson was cancelled. actually meant that I finished at one. I really want to sort this out with this guy. So we made our way to this McDonald's. It was just straight bus. As soon as I walked in, I got this weird feeling. It was like this heavy weight around me. Winter and her girls were... I would say three meters away from me um, we were sitting opposite each other she was with about seven to ten girls tell me because the camera keeps um, running out of battery <clears throat> no, I said to Claire sorry like just stare at me she like, what? I was like I don't know I never thought what would actually happen was what was going to happen but like oh god this is so hard like, do you think something happened she was like I don't I don't know but if something happens like I've got you I was just like all of them came over, about seven of them here, and um, Claire was here. Long line of, as a what's the beef or what's your issue with us? Claire was here, and she was. St they were all standing up, and the one that was talking was here, and literally like within five seconds, like one of the other girls swung for me and kind of punched me here, and like I just felt a rush of like slaps and punches and hits, like coming from this side like continuously just hitting that was the aisle that people would walk down to go to like the till and like back like, i moved out of my seat and kind of walked back and the entrance was down. and they followed me and like all of a sudden like the whole place was just packed so, and i was just getting hit and hit and hit and hit the mcdonald's staff just saying stop like what are you doing by foot two maximum like i'm really small um at the time i, was, I know i was definitely short as well i just remember everyone being a, above me and I, I remember claire hitting someone that i like couldn't even see claire anymore and there was a grunt, bunch of black boys and like i don't I came over because they were like on the other side of mcdonald's and they ran, grabbed me one of them like grabbed me by my waist and just yanked me this um it was do you know what? F this. It was in Wolverhampton Central McDonald's, in it. No one's gonna tell me I'm lying. He took me to Wolverhampton bus station. He, he must have been asking me what, how do I, where do I get home? How do I get home? They're just trying to get me home. As Claire, um, and he was like, I don't know where she is. I don't know where she is. She wasn't in McDonald's when I took you out or whatever. Obviously, in my mind, I'm like, shit. Like I just got, I just got hit, and I was just scared that they were gonna come back out side but at this time like, i don't think i deeped it like this was only the start i called chris and he didn't answer and i called Isaiah. i think i think i called him Isaiah, his best friend no not Isaiah. kevin sorry kevin <laughs> kevin um i called kevin um chris's best friend yeah winter and all her friends have just dumped me like they've just dumped me five second conversation just hung up the phone within seconds this boy these boys were here my chris all his friends just as they turn up girls had come boys had mcdonald's in their hand so <laughs> this boy so chris was like his best friend who was who i was not seeing was asking more like uh, asking me if i'm good more than chris like he just looked at me no no sense of i give a fuck about you in any way shape or form he just stood there and looked at me Zaya standing with me with the girls but he was trying to protect me he was just like oh you look just talk to her talk to her ask her what you need to ask her just and the girls were like so yeah we hear you've been chatting shit we've been hearing that you're saying this that and the other about us what's your beef in it if you got beef like what on what what, what, what on it about you what have i said who told you i said so there was like ah oh, tara said that you know, bear in mind kevin is like long-term best friends with tara i am i say it i says kevin yeah have i ever dissed these girls to you ever 
I was like, he was like, no, she hasn't still. She hasn't. Like, she's never actually said anything to me about you. Look, I don't like being lied about. I don't like people saying I said something I didn't say. If I don't care, because before I say something, yeah, I already know what I'm saying. So if that ever comes out, yeah, I I can I'm gonna say it with my chest the way I said it the first time. Just on the back, like this whole side of my face was bruised. Um, my head was hurt. My head. I'm by myself, like. I'm just at this point like I'm not trying to get hurt again so I says to him can you please tell the truth has Tara ever talked shit about these girls to you just say the truth he was like yeah she's my best friend but yeah she has right now that they think I've said has Tara said this stuff to you about them he was like yeah she has it's more likely she said it than Abby Solo would say it like her Tara's own best friend was like she didn't say this like it was probably Tara the girls were like oh, okay well you you know what you need to do then yeah you need to keep your mouth shut don't tell tara what happened today in it we're gonna go after tara yeah if you ain't said nothing then it's cool in it it's cool in it like like how are you gonna tell me it's cool and sit down and talk to me and be like did you say this and then let me say yeah i did or i did it and then jump me you jump me first but being stopped here i would be i would be okay with it i went, I went up to chris like went up, this is actually i know the day that this happened as well this happened on january Tuesday, Tuesday, January the 14th, this happened, 2014, so four days before, um, a friend of mine from school had actually passed away, um, and I told Chris about it, at the time, that he was really there for me, and at the time, so when all this happened, I was still dealing with that loss, he was like, just go home, he was like, I'll talk to you later, I'll just go home. Like, when I was talking to the girls, yeah, um, I was like, I'll be honest, only one of you that I actually said something about Winter, and I said that um, I talked to T about her a couple of times because the boy I was seeing kept talking to me about her. And she was like, what has he been saying about me? And I was like, how he's been saying, oh, like, you're, like, you're buff or whatever, you're good looking, just to piss me off. She's like, I don't even give a F about him, he's not even my type, I don't do mixed race boys, da 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 but F it, like, I was telling the truth, like, that's what you was doing. And I just walked and walked. Um, and I told my brother what happened. He was like, cool tea. I told her and I said, what, I told her what happened and she was like, hey, those, she didn't say I said that. She was denying everything. Um, I spoke to Chris that night and then he was like, ah, oh, I've diffused the situation. I was talking like he's saved the day, um, learning the situation is done. And then he was like, me and you are done. We're done. Like, I care. I, he said, I care about it. He was like, oh, you're, I don't know what he said. He was like, we're done. And the next day, and I was just getting phone calls every hour from T. She was like, where are you? You coming in? Are you coming in? And then the next day I went in and I was scared. I was so scared. I've always thought that I've been like a confident person. I, I had cracked already. Um... I'd cracked already and it was just the start <laughs> over the next course of weeks yeah like hiding from these girls and ashamed and so scared for no reason like obviously there was a reason but I was just scared when I did see them it was like hell you could only get inside the music department if you was a music student. There was a time I was standing outside music, the music department waiting to be let in. Because um, you couldn't get in like, physically yourself. So I think I was waiting for a teacher for a couple minutes just waiting for him to come back and open the door. And I saw these girls come in and there was nowhere I could go. Like There was a toilet, but if I went inside that toilet and they came in there with me, if anything was to happen... I don't know how long it would take for someone who's not related to the situation to come in and do something about it. So I thought, let me just stay here because if they do something to me here, I'm in the corridor so anyone can walk past. That was how I used to think, like, every little move I made so that I could make sure I was safe. One of them literally just pushed me, like, she pushed me. Basically, you know, you grab it and then go like that to open it. It wasn't like a pull, it was like a, you have to open it. So it stuck out quite wide. And she pushed me so hard that, like, this was my back and the handle literally went straight into my... And I just felt this rush of just pain. Like, it took my breath away, like, it was so painful. Like, she looked at me and she laughed. Like, it was, um, it was winter. Took it. Like, I just took it. I just took it. 
continuously day in day out when they saw me it would be a it would be a remark here a push here uh wouldn't let me get past Um, I just wouldn't go in to college and I would make up excuses to my family like oh, this lesson got cancelled so I don't need to go in until this time so that carried on for a while, carrying for a while um, leave that group of girls for a sec I remember it came to like my birthday time which was February um, if you don't know my birthday is like near Valentine's Day and stuff so she was like, oh, maybe Chris will holler you, da, 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 which he didn't. <laughs> he didn't even say happy birthday. But his best friend did. Um, and his best friend asked me, did he say happy birthday to you? And I was like, no. Nah. Well, he knew about it. Like, because I told him that it's happy so his birthday, in case you forgot. Kevin said that Chris said he would message me and say happy birthday. So when I said to Kevin that, um, no, nah, he actually didn't, he was like, that's messed up. Even though I'm his boy, that's messed up because he told me he would and he knew it was your birthday. I was like, whatever. Well, <laughs> um, that hurt me. That hurt me so deep. I feel like, I'm not even going to lie, like, that was the only message I wanted on my birthday. I wanted him to message me and be like, I'm your birthday. Like, even if, yeah, you hate me or you don't want to talk to me or whatever, you got a new girl. I just want, like, I still love you, innit? <laughs> Going back to the Rachel girl, she's actually a different are part of a different girl group. Now Rachel, she continued not liking me the whole year, the whole um the whole way through to this point. And T actually started getting close to this Rachel girl. Um again, stupidly I'm still talking to this T girl. She made me believe her so much that she didn't say anything. She would say things like to me, Oh, Rachel doesn't like you because um the guy that she used to like or she was seeing or whatever um, from Twitter, some random guy. He added me one time on Twitter, and me and him like had this little ins exchange. But I didn't know he was he and Rachel had a past message in each. She said to me that Rachel said to her when um, she saw me messaging this guy weeks back, she thought it was out of order for me to be talking to him, and that's why she started to dislike me. I was like, but me and this guy, we was talking about something stupid, like Chinese or something. I think I must have tweeted something like, I want Chinese, and he was like, get me this, that, and the other. And I was like, yeah, give me your address and I'll send your food. Something silly. Like, it was, it, it was still a stranger. It was just bad on the TL. I didn't know she had history with this guy, and I didn't know it went as badly as it. So I was just like, why would you think that I'm talking to him to piss you off? If, if that's why, like, I won't follow him, you know, like... It, and then she also told me that Chris was the one planned for me to get jumped. Like, he arranged it. He wanted it to happen. Rachel's cook of friends, there was a girl called, let's call her Hayley, Hayley, in my sociology class. And that's the thing, like, people were cool with me, but, like, you, they would be cool with me away from, like, Rachel's viewing eyes or winter when it was like for example Haley with me were in social sociology she'll sit with me talk to me cool but when she was with Rachel and Rachel would be giving me dirty looks she would literally pretend she doesn't know me from anywhere but I didn't have no friends <laughs> I didn't have no friends because everybody was scared of these girls that didn't like me and everyone that wanted to would talk to me these girls would have an issue with people who were scared of these girls but then I didn't blame them because I was scared of these girls as well like Evidently. Tia was coming one night talking rubbish about Rachel saying Rachel said this about this or whatever. Can't remember when. when she was on the phone to me, Sight told me record this conversation. No, to do that's not good. Get phone, tell her to hold on, record it, tell her so she can speak, I'll find an speaker, she might relay, oh just like it's long. Rachel's friends that was friends with me on the down low, um, had each other's number. And I messaged I, I messaged her immediately after I got off the phone to Tara because I was like for once yeah just be cautious I'll be so like, don't be so fucking naive something told me you should record that conversation for once that like, something was actually telling me deep inside that like, I'll be so there's something wrong with this girl and she's gonna she's gonna ruin your life but like, called me talking saying this 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 and this I repeated it to her and I even did a voice note to her as well I, I'm just messaging you to let you know now I'm gonna send you a screenshot of the phone call yeah this is when it happened. I don't have any. I didn't record the conversation because I'm stupid. When she called me, and I don't want no beef anymore. You need to tell your girl if she ever hears that I said anything like this. It was not me. This was bad enough, but 
I didn't know it was gonna get even worse than this. I'm rather laugh laugh right now than cry. I'm thank you for telling me. I I've always believed you in everything, like that's why I talk to you. I don't really have beef with you. Rachel's beef is Rachel's beef. Well, two days later, I went to that toilet that I said I like. I went into her toilet and Rachel and her girls followed me and literally ambushed me. It was just like she backed me up in a corner and she was like, I'm a big woman to you, you know. This girl's only like a year older than me. And to you, yeah. I heard you saying this, this, this about me. Who do you think you are? Da 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 da. I'm a, I'm a big woman to you, yeah. I'm a big woman. I can do this, that, and the other to you. You don't compare to me. Everyone knows me in this you in this uni, yeah. I can catch you, everyone. I want to catch. She's like, oh, I heard you're chatting shit about me to Tara. Da 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 da. But Tara, I don't even like her. She's just in my group, and Tara was like there what the hell did you say to say to her that i said tara like, what the hell did you say i said Haley came opened her mouth and was like i mean so didn't say no rachel you know it was tara rachel was like how do you know she was like oh i don't like her so it's got to be her da, 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 da. i was like how yeah, does that even make sense like, i was like no 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 because i was so messaged me yesterday saying to me that Thingy just called her saying this about you and that like, she don't want no hassle or she doesn't want it to be made out like she said it's actually mad cool like have you said it's actually mad cool like don't have you said it say about you it's like well da -da 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 -da. anyhow i don't care now if you did say it or not don't ever hear my name in your mouth again i'm a big woman to you i'm a big girl i was just like i was literally just standing there like dude i'm literally exhausted like every day is just I was so scared and I felt so belittled, like, I felt so minute. I felt like she was literally, like, bigger than me. Because, and I just felt weak, like, I didn't say anything. I did not stand up for myself once, like. When it came to, like, who said what, like, I, I would open my mouth and be like, I didn't say that, like, I didn't say it. Because obviously I didn't want to ag, and plus I didn't say it. Just being abused and, like, getting hit and getting pushed and getting hurt and, like, she getting punched and slapped and kicked and, like, stuff my stuff being thrown everywhere i would just like take it so yeah um i cut ties with tara like this girl is just like she's toxic like there's something wrong with her i didn't understand like what i'd got who i'd gotten myself involved with like i didn't have a lot of friends as it was because like i said like no one really spoke to me like people would speak to me and like they would openly say like oh you're you're mad cool but I can't be friends with you because like, I can't chill with you because like Rachel's my friend. Clear that like, cause of the issue that like, whatever her issue was with me people didn't want to like chill with me or whatever because of it. Um, they knew I didn't do anything but they would carry on. Like, once you started why not why should we just leave you alone we might as well just continue. All this was within like from January to March. Like, the school academic year wasn't up till July. It just continued. It just went on and on and on like, it it was like it was a worst time of my life like so bad that my family were called by this college and was just like there's a problem like there's something going on and like abby soda's not safe here like there was i just remember like i was like if i died like it'd be all right or i would like pray for something to happen to me so i wouldn't have to go to college like there was a day I was bonking college because I just I couldn't do it. Like cemetery place near in Essex, sort of. It's like a cemetery slash park. Um, and I just kind of sat there. I think for like three hours. I walked past some black guy. He must have been like in his forties. He walked past me. He looked at me and he said like, "Who is that to me? You look like you're suffering, and you're so young." And he was like, you just look like you're suffering, are you okay? And I just started crying. <laughs> Do you want to talk about it? And I was just like, no, it's okay, I'm fine. It's like a total stranger. <laughs> and he was like, I'm sorry, I just had to say something. Like, I saw you from afar. I remember what I was thinking about that time. And I was actually thinking, like, that was the day that I wanted to go home. And like in my life, like I wanted to go home into my life. Like I was sitting there thinking about ways to do it, and I was just like, I had even thought that I'd figured out the way that I wanted to do it, and I was just thinking about 
how I was going to tell my family. Was I going to do a video and leave that behind? Was I going to write a note? I didn't want to. I was trying to think about how I was going to pack my stuff. Because I didn't want my mum to have to pack my stuff after I take my life. Like, I was just thinking of so many things. I, you know, like, I don't know. <laughs> I just. Hold on, I need to fix my face. <laughs> I wasn't even thinking, like. Like, I was doubting doing it. Like, I came to peace with it. And I honestly was going to. I really wanted to do it. And I got home that night. It wasn't even like I can't do it. Right now I can't. Like right now I can't. And I went to bed knowing that I still wanted to like take my life. Like, and I was just like, when the time's right, I'll do it. But I was like, I can't do it now because I didn't want, I really didn't want anyone to have to pick up my pieces after I did it. If I could click my fingers and make all my stuff disappear and have <laughs> my funeral planned or whatever I, I would like I just kept thinking I don't want my mum to suffer I was like the pain that I'm feeling I didn't want my mum or my brothers or my dad to feel that pain and I was like I would deal with it ten times more I have to I just don't want them to be in pain because I do something um so I didn't do it and um god it just got so hard it just got so hard so so hard I think like the reason why I'm so upset as well I was so upset and I've been upset is because I wasn't a fearful person of people before I wasn't at all like um I felt like I lost a part of myself. Um, as everything was happening, I could feel like I was losing myself. I would look in the mirror and I would be like, I could see like I was dead in my own eyes. Like I could see it and I would get dressed and I would put makeup on and I would go in so that like, my family wouldn't suspect anything. And I would try to make it seem like I was all right. And I was just used to hope that everything would stop. And it didn't, it just didn't. It just carried on, it just carried on, it just carried on. There. So there was another incident that, um, there was a guy, let's call him Joel. I was just, he liked to bring people's drama in it. And he was uh, a bit feminine. Um, not that's a bad thing, but I'm just describing him. He was a bit feminine and would like be with all the girls and just be bitching, like just a bitchy kind of guy. I don't honestly I got no filter right now I'm just telling the truth I really don't care if you know who you are like you I'm not this I'm not lying and I'm not gonna fake anything for anyone because that's why I was avoiding doing this video video he was a bitchy ass boy that's what he did and he was friends with all these girls that had an issue with me and he just didn't like me. he just didn't like me for no reason he was in my law class he just used to give me looks have something to say just all the time like for no reason and it was so jarring he just wanted to be a, a dickhead to me just to be a dickhead to me that just because everyone else was he just wanted to be involved he must have fabricated some story about Abby say was talking shit about him and I didn't know anyone I wasn't talking to anyone at this point no one was really my friend I didn't have any friends whatsoever and he came to one of my lessons and it was towards the end of my lesson and he was banging on the door I'm in my lesson I'm in I was in my goddamn lesson and she opened the door like to let us start going out and also because he was banging on the door and she was I remember she opened the door she was like are you all right he was like is abby Taylor in there from his voice it was but i was just like why the hell is he calling for me like that like, tell us to come outside right now tell us to come outside right now my teacher was just like she went outside outside the classroom so into the corridor um because the lesson was over firstly and like why i wanted to know why this boy's calling my name like I did, it wasn't even a thing where even if I wanted to ignore him, I couldn't because where was I going to go? Like, he's outside my class. Then, like, talking like a girl, he was like, oh, but, like, a bitchy drama girl who was like, why am I hearing you saying this about me? You got beef with me. You got beef with me. I was like, you're a big man. I was like, 
puts your hand in my face again. This was the one person that I wasn't going to tolerate this from because there was no way, there was no way, I didn't care how many times I got beaten up, I didn't care how many times they were going to throw my stuff around, I don't care how many dirty looks or remarks or like animal sounds or whatever he was going to do around me, I didn't care. You as a guy, you're not going to terrify me, you're not going to intimidate me, you're not going to act like you're a girl and you're going to attack me, like there was no way. That was my, that that particular person, there was no way. Me and him, if he wanted to go, we could go. Like, I was not having it. I'm going to have a guy come and try to tell me you want to fight. Put your hands on me and see who goes jail first. I, even to this day, like, I dare you and like, there was no way to intimidate me and tell me you're going to put your hands on me. A guy. There's no way in this in in college. No, the girls I could deal with, but a guy I was not having that. If you are gonna put your hands on me as a guy, yeah, like if I was to tolerate that, then I'm stupid within myself. On me, put your hands on me. If you're bad, if you're bad, Joel, put your hands on me. I swear to you, I will finish any career that you're ever gonna have. I will ruin your life. Let's do it. And he was just standing there. He was like, he was like, he was like oh, you've got a mouth now. Like, I was like, it's not even about I've got a mouth. Try me. Try me. Put your hands on me. And I was like to him, stop talking to him. You're a guy. Like, you're a man. Stop. Why are you even going near a woman? And the teacher was trying to get in between me and him. He was just like, because I don't like her. I don't like her. She was like, well, like, leave her alone. Like, what's wrong with you? Like, like you're a guy. Like, that's what the teacher kept saying. She was like, you're a guy. You're a guy. Like, what's wrong with you? If, you? if you know who I'm talking about, you know who I'm talking about. I don't really care at this point whether your feelings are hurt because you know I'm talking about you. I don't care. I don't care because you didn't care about my feelings when you was doing this to me um, for a whole freaking year. Like, I just walked off. I think I went home. And then, like, two days later, my mouth is so dry. I was on my way home from a lesson. This boy, so Joel and his friends, one of the fr his friends that were, were walking behind me, I just wanted to go home. And I could, I, he was making noises trying to make me know that he was there and I was just like, I want to go home. Going to college was a struggle. My attendance was dropping, I wasn't going to lessons. The only lesson I would go to was music because I loved my music teacher. Like, and I would literally do anything for that woman, anything. She wanted me to do any show, any anything she wanted, I would do it. So I was always going to her lessons because, like, honestly, if there was one person in that whole college that was good to me, like, teacher or not, was that when it was that like she knew shit was going down, but she never ever questioned me about it. She just made sure that when I was in her lesson, I was good. And when it was lunchtime or break... I could go to her like her room and just in her building her music department and just chill like i love that woman so i would always go to her lessons i didn't want to disappoint her i wanted to make sure i did all my work like the best for her just for her i just, this particular day i just remember feeling really exhausted with college and i just wanted to go home that day I remember feeling like i was gonna break down any moment and i just really wanted to go home Every time I would come inside that building, like, I just felt dead inside. Like, I was walking to my death sentence. Every time I would go to college, I would feel like something's going to happen today. And I have to come back here all the time. Like, it wasn't like a job where you could just quit. It was like college, like, it was school, college building, the college, um, and the bus stop. And there was teachers at the bus stops. So I was like... I should be fine here yeah, like halfway between the entrance of the college and the bus stop which was probably like a two minute walk away was Abby Soda and I heard him say my name and I carried on walking he was Abby Soda I'm walking because I'm, I was like what am I going to stop and his friend was like Abby Soda you cannot hear him saying your name like who does she think she is and I was just like he was like in it like what Abby Soda I was just like you know what I turned around I said yes I can't remember what he said he was like, I, honestly guys, I don't want to fabricate, I don't want to lie, I can't remember what he said. But all I remember was, it started off as, conversation was not, it wasn't friendly, but straight away, or just the picking on me, sort of straight away. He was just, I can't remember what he was saying, it's sort of like some fake apology. I think he tried to apologise, I was like, whatever, like, there's no point in apologising, like, don't apologise. Because it was, a, it, was, it was definitely a fake apology, I was like, I don't want to hear it. And especially with him, with him, I wasn't going to show him no fear because I knew if of all the people that were bullying me, he was the one that I, I knew he was bullying me to make himself feel better. I really can't remember what he said. I'd rather say I can't remember than make something up. And he was just talking 
trash about me behind me because I walked up I started walking off the reason why I remember this next bit is because it was like it was the only bit that got to me really I must have been I can't even say less than less than three to five meters away from the bus stops where the teachers were um and me and him following me and he must have gone like you're an effing fool you're an effing fool Abisola and I was like, what? I was like, do you know what? No. Like, no. Because this one guy, like, the girls, like, I was terrified of them. I won't even lie. The way people would treat him, he wouldn't like him because of the way he acted, the kind of personality he had. He was very, like, feminine and bitchy, like, um, very, um, I mean, stereotypical, bitchy boy, like, just with girls, like, I'm trying to be careful how I say this because I don't want to offend anybody and I don't mean him I mean in anybody else who's either has that sort of like um would say they have that sort of personality but he was very feminine and he was with, always with girls and he was very bitchy uh, I used to see it the boys in our class used to do it to him and I would never even I obviously it had nothing to do with me um but the boys in our class would even like be like oh you're gay or they'll be like they'll say like stuff about him all the stereotypical bad like sort of vibes he had that like he very like gossipy and dra he liked drama so i was like i i'm not gonna have this from you my pain and me i'm not gonna be the reason why you start feeling good and i was like who the f are you calling a fool who are you calling a fool who, who are you calling a fool did i not tell you before that me and you can go if you want to go like did i not tell you that who are you calling a fool the teachers were there and they were like and they literally like ran over they were like what's going on i was like he just called me a fool like he always keeps getting up he keeps picking on me so you're trying to tell me my mum raised a fool are you stupid like where do you know me from no like you need to settle yourself don't know who you're calling a fool i was literally going on and on i was like everything you've done to me i let it run I let it run now you want to try to start following me down the street calling me a fool i'm going home i didn't do nothing to you i didn't do anything to you just wanted to get yourself irrelevant into the situation no one told you i said anything about you meaning you have never spoken like you just used to love drama and i just went mad i was like who the hell are you calling a fool was going crazy i lost it i lost it i lost it and the next day like literally came into college there was a meeting they were and i had a meeting with my mom my brothers like i had a meeting with the vice president of the college like my form tutor they were just like my form tutor was just saying everything she's witnessed everything she's seen like what happened in mcdonald's I was just sitting there like I was just like I'm done like I had we had reports from the teachers that saw what happened last night um between you and Joel that are uh, they heard him call you a fool she did hear him call Abby so a fool he said it multiple times da -da 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 -da. but and then the vice president had the audacity to say to me um but even though he called you a, a fool you had no reason to get angry like that my mum was like, excuse me? All the things that have happened to my daughter inside your school, like, you're going to tell her that she can't react because someone called her a fool. After all the things that she hasn't reacted to, that you guys have, like, physical evidence of that she didn't do anything and she didn't react, like, she just took it. Of all the footage you saw of her in the bathroom, of her in McDonald's getting angry, she's only now just getting angry and you're saying that she shouldn't get angry. And the vice, my mum just stuck it on her, this woman. This woman was like, yeah, but obviously by her getting angry back, she's made the situation worse. My mum was like, at what point is my daughter supposed to like stop taking... She should have done said something before. You guys knew all this was happening and you didn't do anything about it. And now you're mad because she got mad. Like, and the woman was just like, oh, so uh, I'm just trying to figure out where to go with this. I don't want this getting into the newspapers like just saying so much this like the vice president of school she was so stupid you're such a stupid woman and that's why probably so much stuff happens in your college that goes unnoticed and that's why so much stuff happens in your college that's in the fucking news like she literally sat there and looked at my family and was like oh i don't want it to get in the press i would like for this to stay within ourselves and sort this out in the school no she's like can't drop out i was like i'm not dropping out i'm just not coming in like i'll do the work from home like i'm not coming to college i was even crying at the time I was like, I'm not coming, like, I'm done. No. She was like, oh, what if this, this, that, and the other? And the thing is, you're, you're, you're begging me to come to the college, come in, come to my lessons after everything you've just said. Like, after you just made it seem like it's my fault. She was like, oh, please. Da, da, da. I was like, please what? You're, you're always preaching about anti-bullying this, anti-bullying that, yet yeah. someone 
has clearly bullied me. People have clearly done this to me. We're looking at the footage, like we all sat there and watched the footage. You're gonna tell me, ah, oh, well you shouldn't have, you shouldn't, have, you shouldn't have reacted at the end if you don't apologize. She told the vice president to apologize to me, vice principal to apologize to me. She apologized to me. I was just like, after everything had happened, it was only, only just halfway through the year. Like when I say it was a constant daily thing. I really wanted to die, like I really wanted to die. That was the only thing that I would think about it and I'd be like I would be at so, I'd be in so much peace if I wasn't here. I'd get up in the morning and I would make journey to college and I would and I would get to like the bus station and I would have panic attacks like on the bus. I would be crying. Like, I would go to the bathroom sometimes and I would just cry. And I remember, like, I was in a bathroom near music. I went inside the bathroom and the girls were in there. And I was so scared to actually stay in that bathroom with them. Like, I just left the bathroom. Sorry, and I just went back to my lesson. And I just held it. Like, I needed to pee so bad. But I just held it because I was like, I don't want to be in a bathroom with them. Like when something happens, like they would like do stuff to me, and then they'd get caught for it, and I was so scared and so I don't say uneducated, but I was so paralyzed by the situation. Say anything, like teachers would be like, "I just saw what happened. Why don't you just report? It's not worth it." Like, cause I, I was like. I never met people like that in my whole entire life. Like, I was like, if you're capable of doing this to me, but me not doing anything to you, like you hearing that I said something about you, and I didn't even say it, and you know that I didn't even say it about just because of that misunderstanding. Like, what will you do to me if you hear that I've told a teacher that you've done this to me? And teachers would be so scared to let me go home via public transport. The college would send me home in a cab, like. I think it happened like 10 times where the college would literally call a cab company and tell them to send me home. It was... I remember there was a day that like... One of my teachers was like, I'm so scared for you. Like she asked me about where I lived and she like planned a completely different route for me to go home. Like she wrote down all these different routes where like I wouldn't have to get buses from that bus stop I could go to a, I'd, I'd have to go to like a different bus stop and walk a different way and it might take me longer to get home but she would, she'd be like at least she wouldn't go through all those places where most of the kids like the other people the other students are after carried on and just carried on and just carried on but yeah long story short um I didn't really make any friends with anyone um people that I was friends with they either left um, some people that I was friends with either left or for some reason they got kicked out or they just got a transfer or their timetables changed um, I would just stay by myself and I would occasionally see my friends from Essex um, and some of them would know what was going on and they would just say like doing that why are you still there and I'd be like I can't leave now like it's two thirds of the year and like, I can't leave now and I was just I felt embarrassed like if I was to go, if I was to change colleges, I felt like it would mean they won. Some of you might be wondering, did I ever see Chris? Uh, I saw him a few times, she saw him like twice, um, actually over like the course of like the remainder of like four months. The first time I saw him, um, he was getting on the bus or something and I was on the bus and he looked at me and I just looked at him and he just kind of smirked and then went upstairs with his boys and then he messaged me and he was like call me when you get off the bus because I would get off the bus before him because our college was before his and I can't remember what he was talking he was like you're alright whatever I can't remember what he was saying um, if I'm correct like we didn't speak for long at all I don't think I ever spoke to him after that day like I think he just was like trying to play with me like messing my head or whatever <laughs> with the bus and then he was like across the road from the bus um, and it was weird because I looked out of the bus at the same time that he looked into the bus and we just kind of caught eyes and he just stood there staring at me 
and I was just staring at him and then it was just like I just looked away oh yeah and <laughs> I forgot to mention this actually but if you guys are wondering did I ever find out what um Chris um um you should know what you did I'm not gonna tell you da -da 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 -da. and he was mad at me over the Christmas and New Year period and the reason for why he didn't do anything when these girls jumped me <laughs> is because somebody told him that I had slept with or done something with his best friend Azaya um fake name Azaya and fake name Chris um someone had told him I had done something with his friend and he believed them and who do you think that somebody probably was he never told me to this day I don't know um yeah that's 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 why he didn't intervene and that's why he stopped speaking to me um and <laughs> uh this reason he actually told me this himself um I think like a year later uh we started talking again and and I've always asked him who is this someone that told you this he won't tell me who um so mate <laughs> uh, I'm assuming it's the girl who introduced us Tara with your little lies why didn't you ask your best friend like why didn't you ask Isaiah whatever he said but he said like he didn't need to ask him because he's his boy so he just cut me off like he just believed it that like, like yeah <laughs> um I thought I'd let you guys know that uh, but yeah that was that with him <laughs> but um I did my exams I passed college is two years this was just the first year um, yeah I just stopped going if I'm totally honest with you guys in the first year honestly there's not a lot to say it continued there was never any like physical altercation so I never actually saw some of them again but like the friendship group that jumped me um half of them got kicked out or left the ones that were left they left over second year they just left me alone they just would look at me physically i was there but mentally like my my mind was just somewhere else so really and truly, that's the long story short of like a very long story actually of i believe and is it something i still struggle with yeah uh, okay, actually I've seen I've seen two lots of the girls two times actually since and this is last year I was with um, Bay which you guys may know uh, um, I was with him uh, the first time we was in um, I don't know if you know you guys know Bagel King in South East um, and we went to Bagel King and two of the girls were outside and I just froze. was so fresh in our relationship that I told him briefly what had happened to me in college but I never told him the depth of everything so I remember we had an argument <laughs> because I didn't want to go in there and he didn't understand why and I just my whole my whole aura changed because I was scared and he told me like you need to come in here and I promise you like I've got you these girls won't do anything to you they won't do anything to you I'm here like and I remember I walked past them and like my whole body just throw like I was so scared um nothing happened they just stared at me and the second occasion I was in Tickle Me <laughs> um, in West Norwood and we was walking past and I was with Rye again and I said to him that like, Rachel's in there like Rachel, Rachel's in there um, and he was like I'm taking you in there like we ain't gonna order anything I'm gonna take you in there I want, and she's gonna see you and I want you to look at her and I'll, I'm gonna take you out I was like no I don't want to <laughs> he was like no like we're going in there took me in there and he was like babe what do you want and I was like oh um I think I think I've got a drink do you get a drink I can't even remember that like, was gonna get something and then he was just like look at her and I just looked at her and she looked at me and looked down on her food then looked at me again and gave me a dirty look and then looked away and then she looked at me like she wanted to see like whether I would react or something I just looked at her and I just walked out like and we just walked out like I remember I was I felt scared then but at the same time I was just like but where I stand with the situation like I'm not that naive anymore and I'm not that fearful anymore and I'm not that girl and I'm not a pushover anymore I dare someone to try me like that again I dare someone to try and belittle me like that again I dare someone to come and try that with me again and see how far that gets them where I've learned from it and all I, wanna, all I now need to like, deal with is like the emotional side of it. Like I know that it wasn't my fault, 
and I blamed myself for so long. But like, if anything ever happens to any of you, like, it's not your fault. Anything like that, it's not your fault. Like, someone told me today that hate is a different type of admiration. I was talking to Riley the other day, and he was like, everyone has anxiety. Everyone's scared of someone. Um, and there's that small amount of people in society that because they're fearful of other things they try to make other people fearful of them and they treat people bad to make themselves feel good and like I'm not one of those people um, but these girls were I'm at the point where I'm good and um, I'm good and I will be and they'll see that um, like I said at the beginning like, I did this video because it, it was literally the highest requested video I have ever had ever since <laughs> I posted that video, literally, if you go to that video, um, having a friend's been alone video, literally, it scroll down to the bottom, like, everybody is just wanting that video. And, um, I feel like, I can't keep you guys waiting. <laughs> um, but, I'm glad I did it, um, and I'm able to share it with you guys, and you guys can understand where I'm coming on, coming from with certain things. Tell my bullies, um, I'll see you in the future, innit? <laughs> I understand where I went wrong with um, a certain company. Like, I understand that the fault lies with them. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the future. Just watch this space because you guys are my motivation and I'm going to make you guys so mad. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Um, subscribe as always. If you've got any questions about anything, comment below. Um, hit me up. You've got me on everything: Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, Abby Soda JD. As always, yeah. Check out my blog as well, Abby Soda JD Official .com. Um, I've got like content on there that I don't post on YouTube. I am back, guys. Um, and I know that a month is a very long time to be gone. But I definitely have my reasons for it. I will explain. I'm going to do a little update, life update with you guys. Enjoy this video. I've got a really itchy eye. Oh my god. Um, I'm sorry it was long. Um, and I hope that I was clear enough in the video. Um, and if any of your feelings are hurt. Because you are one of these people in this video. I don't care. Um, my feelings were hurt. And you didn't care when you was doing this. So, um, everything in this video that was said is true. Um... If you've got any problems with that, you hit me up. I'll remind you what you did in it. Yeah. Anyone that's watching this and you're going through this situation, you're so strong. Um, and I admire you. And you are not alone. Taking your life is not an option. It's not. Other people, it is not a good enough option. Um, and I feel like I'm such a hypocrite in saying that right now, especially. But it's not an option. Um, don't do it. Don't let them win um, and be strong. If you need to hit me up, you guys know I do the Ask AJ's email thing still. So, contact at gmail.com. You send me your questions anonymously and your dilemmas. I can answer them and I'll send the um, answer back to you via email if you want. Or I can do a video response which will, which will stay anonymous and no one would know who you are. Um, but in the meantime, please stay strong speak to people if you can um and please don't blame yourself um for other people's actions you are not their handler you are not in control of them you can't stop people from doing something that they want to do it doesn't mean that's right it's not um but it definitely means that you're not to blame a person people like that people like the people that did what they did to me people like that who might be doing whatever they're doing to you like people like chris People like Rachel, Tara, those people, they are not worth a single thing. There is nothing good or pure about a soul like that. Anyone like that, and I mean every single one, Joel, because if you're the type of person to treat someone like that, there's something wrong within you and not the person that you're going for. So if you are on the other end, if you're the, the, me in the situation, and you're going through stuff like just try to just try to try to see them for what they are which try to not let it get to you and i know that's so hard i know that's so hard to do but please just try and i feel like bullying is such a it's such a tough topic um and it doesn't help when you have like teachers like i had like the vice president that i had 
brand principle that just are so oblivious and they always want to act like there's a reason for why there should be a reason for why someone should act like react to retaliate if they wouldn't have acted like that no someone just shouldn't treat people like that full stop um and i feel like bullying is just something that's so tough and it can happen to anyone in any workplace in any that and i just feel like it's something that i really want to make a key part of my channel not just fashion not just beauty because yeah those things are amazing but bullying is something completely different and i need to help people with that and that's one of the reasons why i did this video as well so please expect content like this um content related to this topic content related to bullying and anxiety and depression and things like that because they're real things and i feel like they need to be talked about and that's what i'm here for i'm here to make you look cute <laughs> i'm also here to educate you as well um so yeah please subscribe if you want to see that bye um i've eaten two hot dogs actually i need to go make my stir fry i need some fruit so i'll see you guys <laughs> in the next video Bye. Thanks for watching. <laughs>